Good morning, Planet Internet. I did not want to be late, so I'm running out with no shoes or socks on and flying out. I was on the bike riding for a 30 minute ride and suddenly I looked down at the clock and it's like, I gotta be at my appointment in five minutes. Man, I flew out here as fast as I possibly could. And uh, the guy's like, oh yeah, I'll be there at 9.30 in like 20 minutes. So I'm good. I'm gonna run home because I forgot the uh, smoke detector to put up there. I had to grab my propaganda and my ice and this is the wrong shirt to go door knocking. He called the septic tank company. The brother of the owner just came by and says the septic lid is right there. We jabbed a few tools and there's the septic lid. Just getting out of the uh, Pet Supply Plus, picking up some bedding for the chickens and some food for my my bird. It's in the uh, store just now. And a gentleman uh, goes, oh, so you're a real estate agent? I said, yeah, I'm a real estate agent. He goes, who are you with? I said, I'm with EXP Realty. And he goes, oh, how do you like it? I said, I've been doing this 30 years. I said, no, I was a Century 21 for 28 years and now with EXP about two years. He goes, oh, okay. I said, are, are you in the market? And he goes, no, I'm a realist. I'm a realtor. My heart sinks. My heart. I feel my heart, right? Like to be a realtor, man, times are tight. And I said, yeah, I just got back from door knocking 100 doors a day. And he goes, wow, you door knock 100 doors. He goes, I used to door knock. Real estate should be a business where you could do this full time. But it's not a business that you can negotiate the effort and right now is going to be an exodus a purging of real estate agents because of just how hard it is and he says yeah it's hard i said yes it's hard and i it hurts me because i i feel i feel like so many times i'm there like where i'm like no man this is just too hard i don't want to fight anymore. i even get a lump in my throat thinking about me having to do anything else not out of like shame or embarrassment it's just i just don't want to be in a position where i would have to do something else to supplement my income because it takes a lot for me to survive like i have to earn a good living in real estate to survive because my costs are so high i couldn't work at a pet store and feed my family it's just no not a chance i couldn't feed them for I couldn't feed them and forget having a house to live in. I couldn't put a roof over their head. So for me, it's like seeing that only drives me and it should drive you. There have been times in my real estate career where I've been up against a wall and I have to earn and there's nothing more painful, psychologically painful than to have to be put in a position financially to have to have to, have to do this. So I say, this is a saying I have, you never want to have to, but you have to want to. You never want to have to do real estate. Like, oh man, I have to sell a house or I'm out of the business. Oh, I have to close this deal or I'm screwed. You never want to have to, but you have to want to. Because if you have to have to, then it's scary, it hurts, it, it makes you make poor decisions. You, you feel like nothing you're doing works. When you know that the repetitious boredom that I do, for example, door knocking, like someone, if your expectation to go door knocking is to go knock on doors and you're gonna get a lead, and when you don't, it hurts because you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do now? I didn't get a listing today from knocking on the doors when you have to. But for me, I knock on doors every day because I, I know and understand the level of failure. I know and understand the level of failure that I have to go through, the amount of rejection I have to go through to achieve what I, what I achieve, right? Just to survive in this business, just for me to survive in this business. I have to be rejected no less than a hundred times a day. That's, that's just the way it is. If I'm not putting myself in a position to be rejected 100 times a day, I, I don't eat. 
the idea of me having to go work somewhere else to supplement my income. Like I would, I would tear the realtor logo off. I would, I would not. All of my social media, like if I had to leave, if I had to go get another job, all of my social, there, you would never know. I would do some the artist. I, I would not. It's all or nothing. And it, it just, it pains me to see, especially someone over to be a realtor and have to work something else. Right, because this is this is a very nice job. This is a very, as far as I'm concerned, very cush job. You can make your own hours. The pay is very good when you get paid, when you get paid, if you get paid, when you get paid. The pay is very good. But in between, you could go a month or two or three or four or six a year without getting paid in this business. Hasn't happened to me, I've never gone a year. I'd be out of the business. And right now, for you realtors who watch my content, I try to demonstrate as much as I can on the day to day so that I encourage and I inspire you to get out there and do it because this isn't a business. This is not what they show on TV where people are ha ha he he he, glass of wine, fancy shoes, shaking hands, kissing. But it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It is a disgusting business. This is such a, like I, I tell my kids, that, you know, and they're like, oh, I want to be real estate. I said, no, my God. And, and you know, I've been I've been offered to speak on stage and, and once, right? When I was with C21, they asked me to speak on stage and then they said, "Hey, what would you tell somebody who's thinking about getting in the business?" I would tell them do anything else, don't get in the business. I encourage anybody who's on the edge of getting a real estate license, don't don't come in, man, woman. Just don't do it. it it's not what you think. It's not what they show you in the TV shows. It's not like that. It is for some people. Because there are two avenues in this business that you can pursue. They are uh, marketing and there is prospecting. One is advertising and one is going out and hustling. There are two ways to get business. You wanna get paid in real estate, right? You wanna go in and get your license. You're gonna find two paths. And the majority, 99.9% .9 of the real estate agents out there they work buyers, right? They work with buyers. I work with buyers, but I try to work with sellers because I wanna help someone sell a house, but when you are a listing agent, you get the contract, you have a contract and you get paid. When you're a buyer, you have a buyer and they could get a contract with someone else. So this is the reason for that. So 99% of the real estate agents focus on being buyer's agents and then they could advertise, they could acquire a buyer, they could do open houses, etc and they could come to the place where they will get somebody who says, I'm interested. They raise their hand. I'm interested in selling my house or I'm interested in buying a house. When they're interested in buying a house, you show them houses. When they're interested in selling the house, you show them yourself. You have to present a product and the product is you. When you become a buyer's agent, you work with buyers, you show them the product, the product is the house. So it's, easier in a sense to be a buyer's agent because you can demonstrate a product whereas to be a listing agent the product is you and you have to say here's what i can do to sell your house and so there are very few and the most of the super successful agents are listing agents because they're good at marketing themselves and putting themselves in that position i focus on that because it's good it's good money it's guaranteed money when you get a contract as a buyer's agent, it's not guaranteed money because you don't get contracts with buyers. Yes, you can get a contract with a buyer, but if they never buy, you know what I mean? It's a different animal. Basically follow two paths. You can advertise and market and look for people who come to you, or you can prospect by going door to door or making calls and look for people. There is a predictability factor when it comes to what I do. That's why I do it. I want control of my business and I have a certain amount of income I have to get. And the only way I can control that is by looking for people, cold calling, door knocking, prospecting by phone. That's the only way you can go to look for people. If you're going to have people come to you, you advertise bus benches, advertising in the newspaper, internet. You can advertise on Zillow, Truly, or Realtor.com. You can spend tens. You can spend, t sky's the limit on what you can spend on marketing and advertising to generate that incoming influx of business to generate an income. Or you can go out and get it. Very few people do what I do by going out and getting it because 
it sucks it's a lot of rejection but i don't mind the rejection so i go out and do it hey baby my kid forgot her homework assignment this is kind of like how the real estate thing works you want to go do things for your pleasure but if you don't do what you got to do first you can't go take off otherwise you're going to end up working in a grocery store and not working in real estate because you didn't take care of your responsibilities first. My daughter's responsibility was this homework assignment and she wanted to go play with her friends. And so the second the bell rang, she was thinking about her after school activities and did not think about this homework assignment that's due tomorrow that she had to bring home so we could do it. Instead, she's checked out. That's how the real estate business is. If you're not completely 100% focused on the assignment and all you want to do is go play on vacation or you don't want to go actually do the work that sucks, you're not going to be in this business very long. And look, success. She got it. Wow, you got lucky. She wasn't in there. She wasn't in there, but the door was open? Yeah. So I just ran in. You got lucky. Hey, guys. What sort of trouble are you guys causing over here? Can I tell you about something I like more than Chipotle? Oatmeal. I love oatmeal more than Chipotle. And I thought like I would document a moment or a season of my life that these cups right here and oatmeal, you'll remember this, James, one day looking back on this video. Remember these cups and this oatmeal? And like, it's really all I eat. Like I have maybe one meal every two days. And then just when I get hungry, I eat this and I'm good to go. After they fell steadily over the winter, mortgage rates have risen again. Here's what you need to know. This graph shows how rates have changed. There is a lot going on in the housing market right now for the spring market. And anyhow, keep in mind, not all renovations have the same ROI or return on investment. Home might offer you. Let's connect so you can explore your options in that area. Thank you and have a great day. Amy reached out to me at lunchtime and I wanted to go to Chipotle for lunch. Not go, I can't leave. Oh, you didn't want to go, you just wanted to have deliver leave. Chipotle, She's but not. then you couldn't leave, so you just want me to deliver Chipotle and I was going to sit in my car and eat it by myself. Because she can't leave. She's like, That's, I can't, thank I can't God I didn't leave. follow I, that plan. I think I can leave next year. Maybe. Anyhow, Jamie said the word Chipotle sometime around lunch and it's been in my head. So as I was live streaming today, you know, sometimes when I do live streams, some people put a tip in the tip jar. There's a little tip jar. And uh, Danny Alvarado, thank you, put in $5. And there's a comment they could put in there that says for Chipotle. So you guys can thank you. Thank you, Dan. Danny Alvarado, thank you. He put $5 in the Chipotle tip jar. So anytime you guys are on YouTube, there's a super chat. I don't know if you can do it anytime. If you want to support our Chipotle, you can also go to Patreon. Uh, you know, if you really want to give us money, just just reach out to me. I'll find a way. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned we're going to Chipotle. The last night I was having a dream that we were by the chicken area and I was cleaning up, cleaning up, and all of a sudden a big grasshopper. It must have been like that big. Beautiful green grasshopper. But when they're that big, that's pretty damn scary. It's like a locust. Now I know why it injured my dream because sometimes you're like, why did that get in my dream? There was a movie I was watching yesterday that there was a locust, a bunch of locusts were flying in. That's why. Anyhow, it was a locust. I don't think it was a grasshopper now that I think about it. So I'm dreaming of this massive grasshopper locust hopping around and I'm dreaming of it. And then it jumped up and landed on my head. And in like probably about five in the morning, I went to hit it. I'm like, ah, I hit it. Well. Clearly I hit it in real life because Nicole, uh, like, I, I think I might have hit her a little bit, but not so much as I punched the headboard and she got, she goes, oh my God, what's the matter with you? You're going to give me a heart attack. You're scaring the hell out of me. I said, I'm so sorry. There was a big cr crooked grasshopper on my head. She goes, I don't give a crap. You're sleeping in January's room from now on on Wednesday and I said, you're gonna give me a heart attack before my comp my tennis and nah, nah, nah. well now I can't stop thinking about that stupid locust grasshopper cricket, whatever the hell it was. Jamie says that locusts are brown and it was like a dark green with a
$51 for two burritos and a quesadilla. Yeah, there were chips and soda and guac. I just don't understand it. But it's a little uh, thermometer with uh, humidity. Okay, we have made some include uh, really decent modifications and hopefully it's safe. I think it will be to the chicken coop. I wish I could shrink myself down. That'd be pretty cool. Remember that movie, The Incredible Shrinking uh, Woman, The Incredible Shrinking Man? And honey, I shrunk the kids and honey, I shrunk myself. And well, I just wish there was a shrinking machine because I would love to shrink myself down to about 12 inches. So maybe 12 inches would be good because then they wouldn't mess with me. And I would sleep with them. I would go down there and I would sleep in that really cool. That is a really nice outfit. That Rhode Island house onto this paper. Well, which is very nice. Okay. Five workouts, they say. Huh. Mm -hmm.